All right, let's do this one last time. My name is Drew Dodger, and for the last couple months, I've been doing a podcast with my good buddy, Jacob Heron. While we love film in general, with us being artists and all, we have a fascination with animation, and we decided to start an audio podcast after we both geeked out over the animated Transformers movie. We're not perfect, we've gotten names wrong, and we don't always agree on movies. But at the end of the day, we try to bring an informative and entertaining show to you all, and we'd like to welcome you to The Cell Cast. Hello and welcome to another reaction episode of The Cellcast. Joining me this afternoon, or whenever this comes out, is a man who just needs to let it go, Jacob. Why, thank you, and I'd like to introduce our co-host, a man who just had to go into the unknown. Welcome, Drew. How are you doing today, Jacob? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Um, kind of have a rough day at work. I mean, like you had those definitely when you're uh, approaching very quickly Thanksgiving. Yes. So especially at a grocery store. Definitely a grocery store. Yes. And yeah, it's it's very stressful. Very stressful, and be like everywhere you're going, everywhere it's just it's very stressful. So mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so I thought you know being someone who is now a seller of essential oils by Young Living, I thought I would mm-hmm. put on some uh, what they call valor, mm. <laughs> and. It seems to be working a little bit, so... Yeah, well, whatever works for you, my friend. Yeah. Alright, so, how's your day been? Long. I'll just say it's been long, and it's... With the weather, at least it's, in, it's not as bad for me as it would have been for you, oh, but... Is. Elsa is making it very well known and reminding us that uh, her movie's coming out yes. tonight. Yes. <laughs> which is what we are here to talk about. Yes. Uh, if you remember from our quote-unquote live-action Lion King reaction episode from a couple months back yeah. now, what we do with these is we talk about the movie, we'll talk about what we think the movie's, what we expect expect from the movie going mm-hmm. into it. Then, you know, we'll pause, we'll go watch the movie, and then we can- when we come back, we'll tell you what we thought about it. Yeah. And we'll give you at least all weekend to go watch it yourself before we spoil it for you. Yeah. At least that's my theory. Yeah. So, I guess we should go ahead and jump right into it. Okay. Since uh, the original Frozen was your pick for our very first episode. Yes. I'm going to let you continue the the firsts there and go first. (laughs) Okay. So, Frozen 2, the long-awaited sequel, obviously, of Frozen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do I have any expectations... Yes and no, because one be like it's it's following up a a enormous hit that's been blown out of proportion, mm-hmm. but it's still a really good movie. Frozen is what I've heard. I've I've heard little things here and there, and uh, I haven't heard anybody because those people get you know you know advanced screenings and oh I've stayed away from everything for the past month. Uh I was on. I was online last night and I was just like, I was just generally curious what people think of the movie. And, uh, some people are saying this, some people mm-hmm. are saying this. And, uh, you have guys like Chris Stuckman and, uh, Andre, the black, uh, critic guy, uh, Andre black He's comedy. Black, isn't it black nerd? Yeah. Black nerd comedy. I'm sorry. Black nerd comedy. I think that's, it, it yes. means like I haven't watched this stuff in years. But. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He recently just changed it to that, but, mm. uh, but yeah, they're they're well, they're, I quit watching after he was on screen dressed as a Smurf. So, oh, <laughs> he's done a lot more odder. I things. know, but that that just threw me off. It's like ah, I'm gonna go watch something else now. <laughs> but the um, there there what I understand to be like it's still a good movie. It's just not as good as the first. Like most of the time you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I'm kind of expecting. Kind of expecting a film that's gonna be okay. It's still gonna be a really good film. Yeah, but it's not gonna, you know, um, it's not going to triumph over its predecessor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've listened to a little bit of the soundtrack, and I was okay. I was interested in the. I was like, like the uh, 
like a little tease I'll throw in there. Into the Unknown is actually a mm-hmm. song that uh, Elsa sings. And not to go into anything and the reason why and the whole bit. But um, I was like, okay, that's really cool. Be like, it's definitely not Let It Go or, you know, For the First Time Forever or something like that. It was good. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there's a lot more songs with different characters. And um, I'm interested to see it. I'm not truly expecting anything just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But I'm very interested to see it. See what's going to happen and how our characters develop and their journey into the basically the unknown and this forest. This, you know, whatever it is right now. Mm -hmm. Stonehenge is what it looks like. Stonehenge, yeah. Yeah. So... One of the things is like people always talk about. Uh, it's like yeah, no spoilers. Be like those those people who want to go and spoil a movie for people. You're just totally utterly wrong. Don't do that. Bruh. Be like lo- allow people to have their own opinion about a film before you try to go in and just you know give every little secret to a film. And to those who wish to spoil things, I have one word of advice for you. Let it go. <laughs> It's at least three words. One phrase of advice. One, one phrase for advice. Let it go. Yes. Please hold it back until you get out of the theater, out of earshot, and stay off the internet for at least a couple days. That's why we're waiting at least four days. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, be like, I'm I'm excited for the film. I don't really have these huge expectations for mm-hmm. it. But there again, I'm ex- you know kind of excited to go see it. What about you? As always with any movie that I have any amount of interest in seeing, Mm -hmm. a month before this movie, a month before today, I officially went on media brownout for Mm -hmm. Frozen 2. Now, what that means is that I don't go out and look for uh, commercials or trailers, and I don't read reviews. Okay. But if I happen to be... In the theater to watch another movie, or I'm watching TV and a commercial comes on, yeah. the trailer comes up in the movie, I'm not going to close my eyes, stick my fingers in my ears, and go la 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 la, just so I don't accidentally get spoiled on the movie. Like a certain someone we know. Yes. Because I've watched trailers all my life, it's part of the experience, mm-hmm. and it's part of getting hyped up for the movie. So... I have not really paid any attention to Frozen for the past month. Yeah. Except for a couple of stupid jokes I've made here and there, especially Mm. today. (laughs) I have not even gone back to listen to our episode on Frozen or even gone back to watch Frozen before this one, which is odd because usually I do like to watch the the original before I go watch a sequel. Yes. And it's not like it's not hard right now to go watch the movie. It's just I have too many movies to watch right now. Yeah. (laughs) So I yeah. didn't have time to. Yeah, I actually did that like a couple of weeks mm-hmm. ago. Actually, when like I said, uh, an, an other another pod, right. another podcast about well, how to go review it. And but. the thing is, is Frozen, as I think I stated in that episode, is not my favorite Disney princess movie. Yeah, and to most some, people agree with you. On and that. to some degree, I think it's a little overdone. If you know what I mean, it's. it's no. a, I'm not. People drove it into the first movie into the ground a little. A little bit. For being honest. Yeah. So, with all that in mind, I am going in with low expectations to the sequel. I am curious, because yeah. honestly, from the trailers I saw, the movie looks good. Yeah. It will be interesting to get a little more context for that world, mm-hmm. and for Arendelle, and possibly for Corona, but that's a theory not here. Yeah, nor here or there. Yes, Though, I, if that ends up happening and they have somehow kept that a secret, that would be awesome. But I don't think that's what's happening yeah. here. Um, although, maybe just a shout out. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I With all these movies, I like to go in with low expectations for a couple reasons. Okay. If I get too hyped for a movie and it doesn't live up to the hype. Yeah. Which is likely with almost anything, including, yeah. you know... This was true of Endgame. If I had gotten too hyped up for Endgame, no matter mm-hmm. how good End- Avengers Endgame would be, right? Endgame did not follow what I assumed they were going. Mm-hmm. And that might have gotten me mad if I had gotten too passionate about it. <clears throat> I 
I'm still very happy with where Endgame went. Don't yes. get me wrong. Yeah. It's just my fan theory was that was not my fan theory. Where the way that ended. Yeah. That that kind of reminds me of the uh, the movie Film Booth. It mm-hmm. came out a couple of years ago with uh, whoever whoever was yeah. in the film. Uh, I was going to say someone else, but it was like no, that's the comedian. Mm-hmm. But uh, I you know because I had heard some good things about it, and uh, a, a friend of mine was like, "Oh, this is a really good film. You need to watch it." And so I watched it. Had these expectations, and I'm like, "This is the most boring film on the planet." Mm-hmm. It's a guy sitting in a phone booth. Yeah, and he has to do all. It's it's kind of like Die Hard Which, three with a vengeance. Don't get me wrong; that is an interesting concept for a movie if yes. done correctly. Yes, I can also see it'd be very boring. <laughs> yeah, because there's not a lot of on screen movement. That's an that's an audio podcast. Yeah, <laughs> that's not that's a movie. An audio drama. That's an audio drama. That's it would do just the same amount of good. But in, that's anyway. That's beside the point. Uh, going into this movie, I do have. I don't even have a fan theory, which is odd for a sequel. And I guess it's just because this is kind of a... Well, you just stated, but like you kind of do have kind I, of a fan theory, but it's... It's because I like the concept that Corona and Arendelle are in the same universe. Yeah. I want... There's a part of me that's like that Easter egg cameo that we saw at the beginning of... Or during the first time in forever. Yeah. Where we see Rapunzel and Flynn. Yeah. Coming into the castle. Yeah. I want them to expand on that, but yeah. not to, not, I, I want there to be a better, I want to see more connections to that. But I also will understand if they don't, because that's probably not be important to the story. Right. And honestly, with what I saw in the trailer, admittedly working off the memory of the last time I saw it, which might've been two or three months ago, it would have been when that last big trailer came out. Okay. I don't remember when that was. But uh, it does, doesn't look like they're going that way. That, it looks like they're going... Well, if Arendelle... If Frozen 1, I mean, was summer being turned into winter... Yeah. I'm expecting this to be like spring being turned into fall. Because there's also fall colors in those trailers. Yes. And I'm just thinking, well, that would get all four seasons. <laughs> That's true. In, in two movies. So... um. I kind of want to hear, even if this is just a side note, something said to the side, not an important mm-hmm. plot point, but just here's where we are. I kind of want to find out that Hans is kind of locked up in prison in the Seven Isles, just so that, we know he got his comeuppance. Yeah. I don't want him to return as the villain. Yeah. That would be depressing. Yeah. And showing how little thought they might have put into the sequel. And the thing is, this move this sequel this, this from the trailer, it looks yeah. like they put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. It looks like they have expanded this lore and to be to show to to kind of expand the universe, which is why in my mind, if this is somehow connect if this is the main reason why I'm hoping we get at least hear the name Corona. Yeah. Or someone say Rapunzel's name or Flynn's name, even yeah. if it's just kind of in the background. Yeah. And like say, I don't know if Elsa's doing going about her royal duties and they talk about diplomatic stuff. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. I, I don't want it to be like I don't want them to meet necessarily. Right. I don't want it to be that sad. I kind of just want it in the background. Just so that because I'll admit, because of the MCU, I want everything to be connected somehow. Yeah, that's understandable. And because they already showed that connection between Tangled and Frozen, I want that connection to continue. And plus, I wouldn't mind hearing about a Tangled 2 if that ever happened. Even though I don't know how you would do that, but then I haven't watched a show that somehow does that. So Yeah, it's called Take a Little Series. <laughs> I'll watch that eventually. I've got enough shows to watch as is on Disney Plus at the moment. Yes. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm trying. Not, I, I'm not hyped for this. Yeah, I'm just interested in seeing what happens. Okay. So far as I understand, with the the limited information I've you know retained mm-hmm. about Frozen Two, apparently there's something at the very end in which you need to stay and watch. Okay, that's good to know. But then it is my thought you don't leave the movie until the projector comes up and says here's the next things you can buy before the next movie yeah i stay until as my mom calls it the eye shows up you know the big mpaa logo yeah once that pops up it's like okay movie's over 
if something if a scene pops up before the end, we won't be out of the theater before it happens. Yeah. So yeah, and plus Marvel spoiled me there too. Yeah, that is true. So I, I hope it's as good a end credit scene as Wreck It Ralph two, which coincidentally is connected to Frozen. Technically, <laughs> technically yes. We shall see. Yes, I'm tempted to put between this section and the next section a Rick roll, but I may not. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, that was that is our expectations for mm-hmm. Frozen Two. So we will catch you after the movie. After the movie, the following is a spoiler-free review for the movie Frozen Two. So Frozen Two, Frozen Two. We just got back and watched this phenomenal film that just had so much of a roller coaster emotions that you had it's 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 hard to describe what kind of film this was mm-hmm. phenomenal like i'm just gonna say i'm gonna say it again oh my gosh <laughs> this was okay. incredible amazing film i'm flabbergasted at this film sometimes mm-hmm. it's like they they took frozen one which was a really good film mm-hmm and then they just ramped it up to 20. And just, ah, oh my gosh. It's like, by the way, if you want to be like, this is our spoiler free review. And so if you want to listen to more, just keep listening after we get done talking here. Yes. <laughs> so let me ask you this just to be clear. Just if you can't tell. Do you suggest people go watch Frozen 2? Yes. <laughs> there you have it, folks, because I'm in complete agreement. <laughs> So, de- yeah, definitely go watch Frozen 2. It is definitely family-friendly. Yes. And while we do not rate in these episodes, I would say we would both personally rate this movie very high. Yes. In fact, no, I'm not going to say anything to hype it up, because if you hadn't seen the movie, yeah, you need to go in as blind as possible. Yeah. So All you need to have seen is Frozen 1. Yes. And so if you, be like, have not seen the movie yet, turn the pack, yes. turn the pack cost off. Go watch the movie and come back and listen to us. Because I agree. Because we're, we're about to spoil the snot out of this film. Yes. So, go watch the film, enjoy it, and come back and listen to us. You know, learn right, about just, it for about half an hour. Yeah, exactly. All right. The following is a spoiler-filled review of the movie Frozen 2. And we're back. So, Jacob, what did you think? <laughs> This is start you off. Three words. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that was freaking incredible! That was good. Wow! I will even go so far as to say it was better than the first. Yes. Highly be like, yes. 10 out of 10. Yes. A far superior film than the first. Yes. See, here's the thing. The first one, in some ways... Is aimed directly at girls. And the yeah. only guy, reason a guy would watch is because he's in the room with it or he's crazy like we are. Uh, yeah, definitely for a guy like me who watched it three times in theaters. <laughs> yeah. This, while not completely a guy's movie, but was written yes. with the idea that, okay, everybody, we need to be making this for everybody. everybody. <laughs> and boy, did they succeed. Yes. Oh my word. <laughs> Okay, I want I want to ask you a question. Okay, because I'm just I'm curious. How long did it take you to figure out what the what actually the fifth th- spirit was? Once they started talking about it, I don't mean who. No, what? no, no. Be like the. Because I was sitting there going, fire and water, the fifth element. Yeah, love, or if you're into if you're into Captain Planet, heart. <laughs> sure, it's like. Okay, I'll go with this. Well, <laughs> you know what I also thought made me think of? The Last Airbender. Avatar. I... Yeah, the elements, but... I yeah, the element kind of thing is heartbending. No, this one heartbending. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, because... You know, trying not to go into, like, the big spoilers of this film, but just gonna give our general impression. The... We're spoiling the crap out of this film. Huh? We're spoiling the crap out of this film. Hmm. We already gave a spoiler warning when we said we're going to go watch the movie now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Anyways, spoil it. Yeah, spoil it. Oh my... Where to begin with this film? The the fact that you have 
our main character is going on this journey, and basically a journey of discovery, a journey of transformation. And what's the transformation? Is Elsa just being herself? It's well, it's learned to be thing. herself. Here's the thing: Elsa had to, I won't say awaken to the other spirits, but she had to yeah. befriend the other spirits. That makes sense because she remember in the first movie, yeah, it was all about being alone. Yeah, she has now had to open up not just to her sister and her sister's fiance and his goofy reindeer. reindeer. <laughs> she's had to open up to an entirely different culture. Oh yeah. Which she's really fits in better with in the first place. Yeah. And she had to befriend four other spirits. That is true. Now technically the last one she didn't befriend until the very end after they destroyed the dam, but Yeah. <laughs> that was Yeah. Good night. The uh the the songs were better. Yes, the songs were be like now, mind you, the songs were written by the same people, and you can tell like uh, into the unknown. Be like, you can hear the the same melody mm-hmm. tunes and the whole bit, but it just amps everything up to eleven. Yeah, and what was it? What was the uh, the song where Elsa is in the uh, the big cave? What is that song? Show yourself. Show yourself. Oh my gosh, that, I'm sitting there just like... Both of those songs yeah, is wow. like... Oh, oh my word. <laughs> I knew Elsa could sing and I knew they could write. I had no idea we were going to get two rock songs. Oh yeah. Hard <laughs> rock, rock songs. songs. <laughs> yes. In a Disney princess movie. Well, it is Adina Menzel after all. So just I say- know, <laughs> but still... And then you've got Kristoff's... <laughs> yes. Newsboy. Not Newsboys. Um... Backstreet Boys Boys. song. (laughs) Oh, gosh. All he's missing is... Well, no, he had the backup singers. They were the reindeer. (laughs) Good (laughs) night. That was great. That was perfect. It was... It it reminded me so much of, like, an 80s... 80s, like, power palette. It was great. (laughs) And then Olaf's song Uh about everything will make sense when I'm older. And you're sitting there going, this don't make sense now. (laughs) Oh, hi there. (laughs) He walks off these big teeth and yes. red eyes. Ah, that makes... ah, you're not scary. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> you are weird, you little... Now, we, we did talk about this earlier. The fact that you had Olaf, which wasn't my favorite character. Yes. He wasn't your favorite character. He had a good song in the first one, and yeah. I felt bad for him. Yeah. When he did not... When you knew if he got his wish, he'd die. Yeah. But in this one, you're going... No, don't die, Olaf. We need you to stay. But at the same time, it's like, I. Of course, that makes sense. It Elsa's does. frozen herself. She can't. Her power is now just shut off as all the other ones are. Right. She can't do anything. Dang. And now, so of course, Olaf it makes sense that the power that she's kind of channeling all the time into him and mm. uh, is it Snowflake is the Snowflake. other monster. Yeah, Snowflake. Snowflake. And apparently, hordes of little snowmen yeah, that I was unaware existed. That's from, until... that's from the uh, the Olaf short. I haven't watched... Yes. Oh, wait, it was from Frozen Adventure. I did sit through that. Yeah. Because I had to to watch Coco the first time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, good night. The, the, the fact that... Be like it, what you said earlier. The fact that it didn't seem they wrote, this character was exactly written for Josh Gad. Yes. This it's... was so written to him, it's not even funny. Yeah, the, in the first movie, it feels like they just wrote a stupid character. Yeah, a little psychic character. To be, you know, the the the, uh, the comedic relief mm-hmm. without considering who was going to play him. And then they got Josh Gad, and Josh Gad understood the character quickly enough. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like. I have no idea if how true this is. And he was able to at least get into the role, but for the most part, his role in the movie was set because I mean he didn't even come yeah. in well, until halfway through the first movie. Far as it's like, one song mm-hmm. and then really one other good scene. Everything else is filler. Yeah, I, I do want to fill uh, one thing. When they were casting, they had written the character. Yeah, but when they got Josh Gad, they they kind of tweaked it a little bit. They didn't like in here. They wrote it for Josh Gad. Yeah, they, the first they, movie it's just like a it's glove. just tweaked to fit him. This is like. This is pure Josh Gad yes. being Josh Gad yeah. and being hilarious yes. as all get out. 
There are two scenes in this movie. Both are recapping oh, yes. what's going on. And they are the funniest thing yes, I think are. I've seen in a while. And now I live. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, I mean, like, there's there's so many recaps. Be like, if you had not seen Frozen, yes. like, I think our friend uh, Garrick had not, yeah. like, had not seen it. Be like... You literally get the entire movie through different little scenes. Yes. It's like when... Um, and I love how when she... During the cave scene and oh, she's yeah. seeing all the past. And they come to the... Of course, there's the part where she she sees herself singing Let It Go. No, and she's, she's like... Going, uh. <laughs> and then five steps later, Hans. It's just... It's just... Poof! <laughs> we hate you. Go away! <laughs> Oh. And while it was hard to hear at the very beginning, because I think our theater had a touch of audio issues at the beginning. Yeah. When they're doing the uh, charades. Oh, yeah. And the first one Anna's getting, which I couldn't tell what Anna was doing, to be honest. <laughs> but they go, Hans! Oh! And, and go, they keep going all these stupid things, making fun of Hans. <laughs> yes! Like, you know what? We didn't get to find out what happened to Hans. And I don't care. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was funny. Just... Making fun of him the whole time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, just just perfect. Just and then, you, and then amazingly, you've got a care. You got you. You have the spirits. Mm-hmm. You have the rock monsters, which are for the most part antagonists through the movie, but the they're not part. real antagonists. Yeah, and they're used. They're more of a foil than anything. Yeah, pretty much. They're just. They're not good guys. I wouldn't say they're no. kind of stupid. They're like Snowflake was in the first movie, yeah. except not under Anna's con- Elsa's, Elsa's control. control. My mind, I kept thinking Anna's going to come up with magical powers. That's what I kept thinking. Because she's going to she have fire she element. The element. <laughs> I think she was going to be some fire element or something like that. I was just like, how do you do love magic where it makes sense? Oh wait, she's not that good at love because every time. Kristoff tries to propose to her <laughs> until the very end of the movie. She goes bonkers. <laughs> He's like, wait, what? No! Like, like no, we're not gonna you, die! You're saying we're gonna die? <laughs> are you saying I was are you saying I'm naive in love? love? At the time! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, El Anna, shut up. You're ruining your own proposal. <laughs> you don't even know it yet. Yes. Oh um, Sven. Oh Sven. <laughs> that Okay. There's a part of me that forgot. Kristoff spoke for Sven. I don't know why. But when I got into it, and of course they come up on the other dude from the right. other land. Yeah, who writer. Speaks for, writer. Who speaks for the writer? Who's writer? Um, who's the actor for writer? It was a, when we go, oh, that's him? Uh, shoot. I'm drawing a blank too. Talk. I'll, okay. I'll look it up. Just oh, talk okay. about reindeer. Okay, reindeer. The, the fact that me like, Spin is like he's so much more animated in this film. He's got this just like just more of a goof. He's more goofy. He's more he's he's the uh, he's the psychic character you want because mm-hmm. in the first film you had to be like okay he's there he's more the he's a steed that's the best friend and now he's basically the comedy relief. Yeah, and Jason just, Ritter is the one you. Oh you yeah, Jason there. Ritter. That's right. I can't tell you what he is, but go ahead. I'll look yeah. at that. Up. But oh my god. Night. This was a great film. You know, like every character, you got to know a little bit more and more and more and more. And uh, the fact you had literally the the midpoint of the movie where Anna Elsa, like usual, pushes everybody away. Yeah, because that's all she knows to do. Yeah, that's all she knows how to do. She literally pushes Anna and Olaf away, and where she can go to this mystical island. Or, or but, well, yeah, thinking, but it makes sense because. Especially from the storytelling point of view, yeah. they don't need to be together at that. If they had been, she would not have been able. Yeah, that's to, true. Once she got the ice message, which yeah. yeah, it's cool. Elsa can do that now. She would not have been in a position where she could have gone to help because she wouldn't have been able to get back across. That's true. The things, and it, you know, it's an iceberg. <laughs> of course, yeah. it could be an iceberg. It makes sense. It does make sense. Um. And no, I was not expecting her to tame the horse. No. I thought every, the earliest part of that, when we kept seeing the horse, I was like, oh my word, this is going to be a problem. Oh yeah. Water spirit, by the way. Yep. Yeah, that spirit. was the water spirit. Yep. She tames the horse. 
and even freezes it at one point for yep. her to ride later. It's like, okay. <laughs> oh, speak of the, the combat in this movie. Mm-hmm. Oh my word! I, I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting to be like, you're having Elsa using her powers even yeah. beyond, like, the freaking ship scene. It's like, literally, Good she, night. she pulls the water out of everything to recreate the last moment. Yes. <laughs> and like, jeez! Well, and I'm wa- sitting there watching that, and they come up on that and go, <gasps> Yeah, I was thinking, like, <laughs> they, they, they were headed to Corona, <laughs> they were? How did they get they here? They were trying, okay, they were trying to find Elsa's thing. Of course, that makes sense. She's the, because she's from the other place, and she's their mother, and... That makes sense. <laughs> Everything's coming together! <laughs> Everything we didn't think was an issue and we thought was something else they brought in together tonight. Yes, they did. Well, this is the best sequel I've ever seen to a movie. Yeah. Most of the time you go into it and they try to, when they try to answer questions, yeah. they don't do it where it makes sense. They, it's they, not fulfilling. This is like, okay, every single thing you kind of thought you figured out, no, you didn't know it. Here's the real answer, and you're going to love the real answer more than your fan theory. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's honestly how it felt to me. Yeah, I agree. It blew all your expectations out of the water. Mm-hmm. It's like when like when you said when you when they came across that ship, and I was like, no way on earth. And they're like, oh, wow. Yeah. And then you actually kill off two characters in this movie. And it's like... And like, not, like, like you said earlier, yeah. it's just like, back to like you're getting Olaf, teary-eyed. Olaf and Elsa but are dead. dead. And now Anna, I said it right. Yeah, Anna. Anna is going through depression. <laughs> she is. Dark depression. depression. Oh my gosh. Where the only reason she's able to keep going is the one piece of advice that makes, that anyone gave her that made sense. When you lose hope, when you, and when you lose whatever the other thing was. Yeah. All you can do is the next right thing. thing. Take the next and step. And she knew the next. She knew what the next right thing was. Oh, yeah. Even though, as far as she knew in yeah. that situation, it was going to destroy Arendelle. Yeah. In but order she to make knew things this right. was how. This is what you have to do to make things right. And the fact that yeah, at the last minute, a yeah. lot of stuff comes together, so everybody has their happy ending. Yeah. And while I want to. There's a part of me, there's the film watcher part of me that says all yeah. this stuff. It's like, let's, there be some real hard consequence here. I don't care. Yeah. Because it's like, because what always annoys me when you do have, when the, when someone does, when the writer does let someone die, mm-hmm. it's like, you could have brought done this other thing, but you decided not to, even though it was perfectly plausible. New. They could have done that here and it would have been disappointing, but they took every plausible way to bring everyone together and everyone back. Yeah, I and agree. And even keep the keep, keep their kingdom from being destroyed, even yeah. though it very easily could have been. Yeah. Though I bet you it starts going more on land from now on. Yeah. <laughs> as, the, as the kingdom grows, they're not going to be going out into the bay. They're going to be getting back onto land. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And, and that yeah. was the thing, so from the beginning, when they were showing the, the minute they showed the dam in the yeah. intro, I was like, that dam is going down. Yeah. Because that's... I can already tell the dam is going to go against nature. That's probably the root of the problem. I just didn't know how much of the problem it really was. Yeah. I agree. And I did not real... I did not catch until they brought the the mother's scarf out in front of the other people. Oh, yeah. That she was the wind spirit. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes! Yes, she's not Gale, but she's... No! Uh, she's a wind spirit. She's a wind spirit. That's yes. why... Yes, yeah, like... Yeah, I, mean, I, I I knew that, but I didn't... Uh, it's like, wow, okay. <laughs> oh, my. Sorry. I went yeah. off for a little while there. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah, just... Yeah, just in short, be like, this film is absolutely incredible. It... It's one of those... It's one of those fantastic rules that takes the premise of what its its original mm-hmm. its its predecessor did and just goes full tilt 100, 120% yeah just better it's like mm-hmm. spider-man 2 yeah 
it just oh man I'm, I'm like I, I'm half home. speechless right now yeah oh man can can't you tell we actually enjoyed this film like which really, I really really enjoyed I'll be honest I didn't expect to like the film because you know it wasn't too hip on Frozen itself yeah but now it's like they redeemed every issue mm-hmm. I really had with Frozen one in yeah. this movie. Because every character had moments where they shined, every character had moments where they made mistakes, yeah, and it all came together, and I was left guessing almost to the very end yeah. as to how everything was going to come out. Oh, yeah. And that's what I liked about it. The thing that got me was the fact that I had, I'd watched a few reviews of some, you know, internet mm-hmm. critics, and they pointed out, oh, it's too slow, it's this... It's like, oh, when they when when Anna and Elsa they break up, be like the story kind of fizzles. And I'm like, after watching it tonight, no, it'd be like you had two very compelling separate yeah. stories that you know were still. How in- do you consider it fizzle when you have to watch Olaf die, die. right after you watched Elsa mm-hmm. essentially mm-hmm. die? Yeah, the the same the same way that Anna did in the first film. Yeah. And you know that as the way our understanding of how this works, Anna can't get to her now. Yeah. As far as we know, she can't come back. Yeah. Unless somehow Anna's able to do what she needs to do. And you realize she's got to take down an entire dam in the age before explosives. Mm Mm-hmm. How is she going to do that? And the minute I realize, oh, the Rock Giants. That's when she went to the Rock Giants. It's like... Okay, that that's why they set up a where you know, like you run into the giants during the the uh, the river scene. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's genius. <laughs> they every step of this movie is done so stinking well. Yeah, executed very well. It's hard to believe that this is not the first movie in the franchise. Yes, it's actually the second because the first one, the first one is what I would consider almost a typical Disney princess movie. In a way, yeah. This is not a typical Chris no. Disney Princess movie. This is a full blown out adventure movie. It is from I agree. start to finish, and it's freaking awesome. I agree. The I would kind of add to yours, like the first one kind of did it break the mold just a little bit because it, it did, it, but it, you, you didn't have the be like oh she she fell in love with the prince and she be like he, his kiss did this. Mm-hmm. Be like it but, was. It was more that that sister dynamic. But in order for that twist to work at the end, it had to play into the Disney princess it did. tropes. It did for a large portion of the movie. I agree. So that when the twist happens, it can then become more of what the movie really is. Yes, I agree. This does not have that problem. I agree. They show you three of what I would consider the uh, Hans level twists. Yeah, in the first. Half hour of this movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, they've been to an enchanted forest. Of course, uh, oh man, I can't even think straight right now. Because <laughs> you've got A, the mother is from the north. Yes. That wasn't obvious. Two, it's because of the mother Elsa has her powers. Yes. I mean, t- two different ways. And third, of course, this is Anna's movie. To, this is Anna's movie, really, to shine, not Agreed. Elsa's. I agree. Elsa has a role, mm-hmm. but this is not her movie to be the hero. Yeah, this is Elsa's movie to be the Anna's movie to be the hero. While the first one was Elsa's, and like both of them, you focus on the other character who's not the hero for the longest point of time, so that when the flip happens, yeah. and you get to focus on the other one for a bit. It's like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. Yes. I agree. I completely agree. So, in conclusion, in conclusion, yes, we do need to finish up. Yeah, here. we need to wrap up here. Um, you want me out of your apartment so you can go to bed? No, I'm not saying <laughs> that. Uh, go watch this movie. Yes, this is absolutely. A, a, a tidal wave of a movie, just for the lack of words, is a tidal wave that hits you and keeps coming. It is a roller coaster ride that does not stop. I agree. Yes, until the very end, like a good roller coaster should. Yeah. The only time I feel like it even slows down is yeah. in the depression scene. Yeah. It's like it, it kind of just. Uh, it's like because you're going and you see you see oh, of course the signal comes in. It's like okay that's the way out. You get 
two quick jokes from Olaf, and then the minute you see the snowflakes, oh, your yeah. heart hits Just the floor because you realize <laughs> Olaf's dying. That means Elsa's dead. That means Elsa's dead. That means... I am breaking at this point yes. over, over this movie because I can't even get my words straight. Go watch this movie. Yes. I wholeheartedly agree. You will not be disappointed. Yes, I agree. Anyway. So I think that's our spoiler review of yes. Frozen 2. So very quickly, you can find me on Facebook under Drew Dodgen. Yes. Check out Drew's photo bin. I may eventually get photos put up there like I'm supposed to because I still haven't done that. Mm-hmm. Uh, go to uh, G Jordan at G Jordan seven five nine on Twitter to follow me on Twitter. Uh, and where can they find you? You can find me at Facebook at Jacob B Heron, and you can follow me my artistic follow my artistic path mm-hmm. with uh, Jacob's Daily Art Corner. Also on Facebook. And you can find me on Twitter at Jacob B. Heron. And I think that's currently what's going on right now. Okay. You can also find us on our website at uh, cellcast.podbean.com. There yeah. you will find links to listen to us on uh, Apple Play, Stitcher, and... Uh, did I just say Apple Play? Yes, you did. I did it again. Apple Podcast, Google Play, and Stitcher. That's where you can find that. You'll also find a a link to our closed Facebook group. It is kept closed in order to keep Arendelle out? (laughs) Technically? (laughs) Kind of? Kind of? (laughs) Maybe? Maybe? Uh, Also, you can follow us both on Twitter at cast underscore cell. And of course, you can email us at cellcastpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. And of course, every time we've said the cellcast, that's with a single L. Yes. And also, when you uh, you know like you know like and subscribe to us, you know wherever you uh, in your favorite podcast directory. And uh, when it comes to this movie, Frozen Two, if you've seen it, if you've seen it, be like, give us our give us your thoughts, your reviews, what you like, what you dislike, and uh, yeah, get that conversation going because mm-hmm. this was a phenomenal film. Yes, and I think that's going to be it. So. Uh... This has been Drew. This is Jacob. And we'll catch you in the next frame. Bam. Bam.